Hey, welcome back everybody. Thank you so much for dropping by. And today we're gonna cover um, many types of different foods that I eat and what I find is good and how to be able to select different foods. But we're gonna cover the part four of the labeling. Why? Because before part three, I just want to put this food back on the shelf so we could eat it. It's been in my office there for a few days. So uh, before we start, guys, you know the drill. Subscribe, it will help this channel. Hit that bell button so you'll be notified every time I decide to post a video. And if you like what you saw, hit that thumbs up and share. Okay, so um, let's get started. Let me select a picture which I will put, uh, but before I do, we all eat shrimps and um, I had the question asked me is how do I know and how do I select uh, which shrimp is good for me yeah we all have our recipes you know uh, take pasta mix it with shrimp lemon and you know mix it with another uh, legume or whatever type of recipes we have but how do we know and which one do we know uh, which to, not to you know to select are they all good or some of them are contaminated well, here's a picture. Here's a picture I got off the news, uh, which they were talking about one day, and I just couldn't believe how India had so bad contaminated shrimps. And China, no surprise there, but Vietnam and Thailand, I was surprised to see them in there. Uh, well, how do we know to stay away from these guys, you know, and make sure that we don't select, well, our well-known barcode? that we have on every piece of food article that we have in the store. It tells us where it comes from. In this case, 471, if you take a look, Taiwan. Anything that comes from 690, just a little bit lower, 691, 692, up to 695, China. What I try to stick around in North America is our own food, which is 00 to 13. That way I know our rules and what we stick to and if there's something wrong, we'll know right away than having to buy it across the world. Um, if you're from France, well, 30 to 37, it's your own food. You know where it is. And you want to encourage your own country too, you know, which is good. So there's a way to figure out where it comes from. And this is how. So hopefully that helps you. Um, two other things I want to explain is when you see on the manufacturer, please use by, and it does, the please is not there, but use by in this example, December 12, 2020. Why? Because it's dangerous for your health if you exceed that date. Well, the manufacturing it tells you, please use this product by this date because it could be health, the danger to your health. Examples, smoked salmon, um, meat, uh, salad preparations with their dip vinaigrette inside, which could make it really bad for your stomach. And you have the other type which says, consumed by December 12, 2020, in this case, for this example. That just tells you, please, uh, you know, use this food or eat it by this date. If not, you'll lose some taste. It's not going to taste as good. Tell even yogurt, you know, you could eat like two or three months later and it's still good for you and it won't be dangerous for your health. Now I'm going to cover a few pasta and show you a few examples. Okay, like I'm going to show you this one. Get the lead. Okay, uh, let me put it on the screen for you. Now this is like good. It's non-GMO. So you know that, you know, there's no genetically modified wheat that was put in here. But hey, let's take a look at the nutritional facts on this. This has all the way based and they're almost all based on 85 grams 300 calories 1.5 grams fat two percent uh, saturated 0.3 two percent and remember the percentage is based on a 2000 calorie per day meal i may be based on 25 to 2800 calories per day i remember somebody my own weight in my own size and weight if you read in my book, used to eat for 4,000 calories per day because he had a heavy training program. 
Um, we go back, cholesterol zero, sodium five milligrams, it's 1%, it's nothing. Carbohydrates, they all range about 20% and a little bit more. Fibers, three grams, that's pretty low, but still. Sugar is under a teaspoon, three grams, and protein, 12 grams. Uh, let's take a look at the ingredients. Drum wheat, semolina. What is drum wheat? Well, semolina, drum wheat, is, it's a flour. And if we take the normal flour, it's not going to make great pasta. But using this one from scratch, it, the, the semolina flour, it, it's kind of sticky. No, it's not as sticky, but it's more elastic because of the gluten and, you know, the way it's made. And it, it makes a great pasta. But all that, again, is non-organic. And I, I say it again, non-organic. Because if you read all these pastas, it's basically all the same thing, drum wheat, so semolina, and nothing of it is organic. So what happens is glycosphate, which is um, pretty much a roundup active ingredient that you spray not to get any weeds in your grass. Yeah, basically that's what it is. Anything that's wheat, lentils, oats, if you got a chance, you want to take care of your health stay away from that active goose fate ingredient that they put in or the you know they spray the wheat lentils or an oats with do it because it's worth it and it's not more expensive to tell you the truth i'll give you another example of that okay let's move on um Catholic. again non-gmo so great that's a good thing let's take a look at uh, Nutritional facts on 85 grams, 280 calories, a little bit less. Fat, 2 grams, saturated, 0.4. 5 milligrams of sodium, cholesterol, 0. Carbohydrates, still close to 20. You see how everything's almost the same, but fibers, uh, compared to the other one, which was 3 grams of fiber, this one has three times more, nine grams, which is great. You get 36% of your daily intake at a 2,000 calorie per day diet, in this case, and 13 grams of protein. Let's take a look at what it's made of. Whole grain drum wheat, something, same thing. And when I say protein, I'm coming back on that. 12, 13, 11, whatever grams of protein it is. Don't forget, um, wheat, lentils, oats, don't give you a full protein, not a complete protein. But in this one, if you take a look at the ingredients, it has barley buckwheat. It's down the list, so there's not as much, but buckwheat is a full protein. So maybe out of this 13 grams of protein, you may have 6 grams of protein in there. That is a complete protein, which is pretty good. So, guys, this one is, um, it's good. It's just not organic, but it's pretty good. Let's take a look at Barilla. This was the second pasta known by Isabel Ott, which is a nutritionist well known, which she was, you know, taking a look at and saying, well, this is like my second best. Let's take a look at it, non-GMO. Nutritional factors, hold on, you're getting there. 85 grams, 300 calories, 1.5 grams of uh, fat, 0.4 saturated, cholesterol zero, sodium four. It's all basically all the same thing. Carbohydrates still closer to 20. Fibers five grams. Okay, two times as much more as the other one we had before at the beginning. Sugar half a teaspoon. Proteins 11 gram. Again, if we go in ingredients, semolina, wheat, drum wheat, nothing organic. And it has to be buffed, obviously, uh, with the vitamins in it. Uh, so this doesn't impress me. Let's put that aside. Now, next one, Catalina with grains. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, tell me it's non-GMO. Yes, it is non-GMO. Very high source of fibers inside. Best product. Uh, saying in the front oh, yeah okay let's take a look at the nutritional facts based on 85 grams which makes it easy to compare to everybody else 
280 calories, 2 grams fat, saturated 0.4, exactly the same thing, cholesterol, zero. Oh, sodium, zero. Wow, that's pretty good. But, you know, when we're cumping zero to 5 milligrams and you're allowed 2,500 milligrams per day, it's not even worth mentioning. Carbohydrates, 20 on the spot. Fibers, 8, mil 8 grams, which is great. It's way up there, which is nice. Half a teaspoon of sugar, 12 grams of protein. But again, and again, whole grain drum wheats, the Molina. Same, same thing. But wait, it's got quinoa in it. And it's got a blend of quinoa inside, which we know quinoa is another complete protein. But it's down the list. So maybe out of that 12 gram of protein, you may have a 6 gram of protein that is a complete protein, which is good. So basically, this one, Catalina, and this one I put in the same, well, same place because they're they're good, good pastas, just not organic. Can we have organic? Um, yeah, sure. Let me put something here. There you go. You have organic. Can you really? Come on, guys. Two dollars for a package. You know. Let's take a look at the nutritional facts. 85 grams, 1.5 gram of fat, 0.2, basically all the same stuff again. Fiber, 2 grams, sugar, half a teaspoon. Fibers is pretty low still. Would have liked that to be like in 5, 6, 7, or 8, or even 9. Protein, 10 grams. Cholesterol, 0. Sodium, 10 milligrams. Not even worth mentioning. But look at the ingredients, the active ingredients. Organic drum wheat, semolina. Semolina, yeah, that's it. That's how you say it. Um, you know, when you're saying French, English, and you speak different languages, sometimes you don't speak them probably, <laughs> most of them. So, <coughs> sorry about that. Guys, here it is. Organic as possible. You do have it. It does up there. And most stores, I think this, I bought this, was at... Uh, one of our core stores basically you know so it, it it is possible i'll put this on when you do have or eat grains wheat oat you know what we just talked about the don't mind just mix it up with some legumes you know and uh, you know put some broccoli or something some type of legumes that you like to make it a complete protein to go get the other amino acids that you're missing. Remember this uh, chart that I put on for you? Even putting in some nuts in there will make it a complete protein, but just like legumes. I just add broccoli to my, you know, my pasta or any other type of other legumes. So let's move forward, guys. Um, let's take a look at this one. Yeah, chickpeas. Um... You gotta acquire the taste, I gotta admit that. Organic. Let's take a look at the nutritional facts. 310 calories on an 85 gram portion, which makes it easier to compare to everybody else. The fat is eight gram, but don't forget, it's good fats from chickpeas, which is like um, gluten-free on top of that. Sodium 10, cholesterol zero. Fiber seven, so it's way up there, almost 30% of your daily intake. Sugar, half a teaspoon, 17 grams of proteins. Almost basically the highest one we've seen so far because it's all been between 10 and 11 or 12 or even 13 that we've seen. Uh, very high in fiber, so great for those who, you know, basically women, you know, during their time of month, lose a lot of fire, uh, for iron between their blood. So some, you know, might require a little bit higher in iron to go get and balance out. I'm just throwing that out there. So basically, this is pretty good. You got to shop around for them because, you know, price is a little bit more expensive. But I mean, a box like this, um, three or are... are Three of you are going to be okay on this to get this portion of 250 grams. Costco. I picked this up. I was really surprised to see that. Really, really nice. 
chickpeas, uh, U.S. organic, certified gluten-free, vegan, non-GMO that we see on there. Now, if I take a look at the nutritional facts, they're based on 100 grams. Okay, let's cut it back down and let's you know calculate how much it would be. So 220 calories, it would be... Uh, fats would be around 30 grams, so basically the same thing as everything else. Uh, saturated fat would be 0.4 grams. Uh, carbohydrates about 51, so it's a little bit lower than the rest. Fibers would be around 9.3 grams, even less than half a teaspoon. Protein would be exactly about 20 grams. That's pretty high. So so far, 20 grams of protein is the highest ones I've seen. And you know what? For people who are always looking to get a good potassium intake, you're talking about not a thousand milligram, but in this case, if you want to compare it to everything else, you're comparing 850 milligrams. That's almost the highest one I've seen so far. Iron's still high, and um, all the rest. And if you take a look at the active ingredients, organic chickpeas, flour, organic yellow lentil organic red lentil flour i mean what do you want more this is this is pretty good and it was cheap i bought two boxes because i mean they're good till what uh, 2022 um and they were like uh not that expensive at costco if i remember right yeah costco this is where we bought it okay guys moving forward um broth we all use broth in our Recipes, okay. I use Campbell. No salt added. Um, this is, makes me laugh. It made my wife laugh because she goes, "No salt added, but it's got 40 milligrams." I go, "Don't forget, in what they use to make the broth, it has salt in it, you know. But it's just they don't add any more. So they're basing themselves on a two thirds of a cup, 40 milligrams." <laughs> Uh, sorry about that. I thought I put my phone on sleep. Let me just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's on airplane mode. I can't believe it's still whistling at me. Okay. <laughs> Moving forward. Uh, one gram of sugar, one gram of protein, zero cholesterol. It's got the potassium in it. I mean, it's, this is one of the best ones. I've seen so far okay so I just want to put it out there because most of them come with uh, six eight hundred up to a thousand milligrams of salt in it and if you're sensitive to salt and you know you are going into that age which you have to be careful for high pressure this is one good one of the best ones that I've seen out there next Kirkland quinoa I love this brand Kirkland organic quinoa certified organic Canada in this case gluten-free I'm not gonna go through the ingredients because I mean quinoa is quinoa I mean what do you want more you got the potassium inside you got the protein because it is a complete protein and it's got the amount of fibers and uh, you know fat that you usually find but the active ingredients, organic quinoa. That's all you really want to know. And to tell you the truth, a bag like this, good till 2002, almost till the end of 2002, organic. And I'm taking a look at all the rest of the organic sold in normal stores. It's pennies more. It's not even worth it. So I bought this at Costco. Really good. But I just wanted to put it out there for you guys. Next. Flake white tuna. Anyways, I'll put it on the screen here. Clo from Cloverleaf. I love this uh, type. You know why? If you take a look at it, here it is. Responsible source line caught. So basically, they're fishing it by line. And, you know, they're, to me, they're responsible. It's like not these huge huge boat that just put a net behind you and just scrape the ocean floor picking up everything and hopefully that's what they all catch is tuna not even the dolphins or other mammals or fish being caught in the line and dying along with it so it's responsible it's only the tuna being fished 
Um, without going nutritional factors in there, which, you know, later, sooner or later, I'll talk about the omega-6 and omega-3s, how it's important, you know, how the omega-3 should always be higher than the omega-6, important omega-6, because it is omega-6, it does act as your system as a transport for other things, which we'll get into that discussion when it gets there. But what I like about this, and you know, I'll put a note on this, albacore. Albacore is a large tuna. And um, you know, I try to stay away from large fish because larger and bigger they are, more mercury content that they may have. If you can't find, I didn't find any, but you know, skipjack or you know, chunk light, um, this smaller type of fish will have probably less mercury in their content. So, just want to put it out there. Now, uh, what did I want to cover next? Oh, meat. Yeah, meat. Here, here's the meat. The you know, ground meat. We all buy it, and uh, I mean. We all go through it and you know for different recipes you know making burgers or we use it in some of our recipes i use it in many type of recipes but i don't buy ground meat anymore uh reason is is like um quick story when i was young my father used to go hunting and um moose hunting uh, we didn't have much money so we were lucky when we would kill a moose and uh, what he used to do is we used to know the butcher on the side street, which was a good friend. And um, he'd take the moose and, you know, help my father take it apart and, you know, make different types of meats that we would use and eat during the, you know, the year. And um, ground meat when, you know, the meat was a little bit less tender and uh, we would, you know, just make ground meat out of it. Why I'm telling you this is like, I, I, I understand that, you know, he used to explain to me why we used to do the ground meat and not buy any, because many butchers and, you know, they tell you they don't do it, but they would use hard candies, everything that they could not sell. Or, you know, sometimes you make a nice piece of meat for somebody who wants a specific weight, but all the breasts on the side, which is still good meat you take and you pass through and you make ground meat with it but may not things that you do not want to find in your ground meat or you don't want to know they, they make ground meat out of it and fats and what so that said i use this type of meat uh, i went to the butcher and explained to him and go i want to make my own ground meat but i don't want to have it soften or you know when they have these spikes that go through your meat and just like it's worked mechanically it's mechanically softens the the meat makes it tender tenders the meat there you go that's the word i was looking for it tenders the meat well um bottom blade roast was the best type of meat to be used for that he tells me he goes it's n it never it's never tenderized because it's kind of the meat that you put in the oven and you cook slowly and for a long time and you leave in its own juice for it to get tender okay so with time i always bought this type of meat used it myself and took the fat off and put it on the side and always made like uh, these things you know made a pound of meat to hear you on Put on the screen because the recipes I have orient themselves around a, let's say a full pound of meat when we make a soup or we make something so I use just a bit of fat in there which I mix it up when I ground meat them but when I decide to make burgers that will go in the barbecue I use a certain amount of fat that I put in there I put a little bit more so it's much tender and much better to the taste so with time, I learned how to exactly the certain percent of the fat that I put into meat. And it takes a few minutes. You know, you buy like what, a few pounds of this meat, a few packages, and I take out my machine and I just package these things up and, you know, use my machine to suck the air out. 
sh uh, you know, stick it in the freezer, and there you go. I'm good for a few, uh, sometimes months. And we have our own meat, and it tastes great. So um, there you go. That, that's meat. You know, if it's for different type of meats, we could talk about later on. But I just want to throw that out there just to let you know. In the machine, sometimes they go on sale for, what, $59. It's not even worth you know, not buying one and doing your own type of meat, if you're into that. Uh, next thing I want to know is the fi uh, I want to tell you about is the fish. Yeah, and different chickens and everything like that. But at least the fish, it has been approved by the FDA that you know they're lifting or the importation of the ban to prevent genetically engineered salmon or other type of fish. Free realm. It's like open the doors. Now we could buy it from any country that has genetically modified their fish. Wow, no, it's called Frankenstein fish. And I know it's hard to figure out where it comes from already than to have to figure out if it was genetically modified, non-GMO. We work so hard on wheat, oats, and everything else to know that, you know, something's not genetically modified. And, you know, they're working on the meat. I know really seriously on that. So we're going to know pretty soon if the meat was genetically modified. But is it really bad for your health? Let's say you genetically modify a chicken. Okay, let's hypothetically, you genetically modify chicken so it grows bigger, faster. And sometimes you take a look at a normal chicken, grown farm chicken, and you take a look at the breast. Hmm, small little breast, you know, just perfect. But you take sometimes, you go in shopping malls and you go and grab your shopping and you see a breast side which is. It looks twice the size of your normal breast. Yeah, basically sometimes, you know, these chickens being genetically modified to grow faster within three months instead of a few, few months, you know. So half the time, bigger, more weight, more money. Always turns around there. We know it. And is it bad? Well, if the protein is there and all the vitamins are there, great. But it's like anything else, if you grow too fast, will the protein have time and the vitamins have time to be in the body of mass of meat that you're taking? Or 60%, 70% of it will be there and not had enough time because the chicken's legs are like broken or they can't even walk because they're getting fat so fast. That's their genetic. You really don't care if they walk or not. Something with time that we'll know. Does it mean that, you know, usually we eat only 100 grams of chicken, you know, to have our 30 grams of protein? Or this time we'll have to eat 150 grams of chicken, which that means more calories to be able to attain the exact protein and vitamins that we take. It's all something to think about and something that I guess with time, how we're going to know. But dangerous to our health? Again, that's with time, but I don't think so. You know, basically, we'll see, you know, it's just like you're just changing them or modifying the genetics. If the protein vitamins are there, I don't see how it could be dangerous to our health. We'll see you time, I guess. All right, guys, um, I think I covered pretty much. I'm just trying to stay within my time. If you like what you saw, please share it or hit that like button. Much appreciated and have yourself a great day.